Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another Hockey Writers Podcast preview show here. Um, we're, we're running through. We're about halfway through the teams now, and uh, we're getting closer and closer to the regular season starting. Joined in by my co-host, Kyle Knopp, as always. And um, we're doing the Tampa Bay Lightning today. As you can see, Jim Bay is with us. Uh, he did our playoff preview shows. Uh, thanks, Jim, for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. Looking forward to the season starting. Yeah, yeah, so we saw we saw a lot of, of Jim uh, went all the way to the Stanley Cup final last year. So uh, we were all the way right up to the end. So that was that was fun doing that. So starting a new season and uh, Lightning could, you know, we'll see if they can make it to the final for a fourth straight year. I don't know when was the last time that happened. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. But it's been a long time if that uh, has happened. Uh, probably back in when the Montreal Canadiens or something like that. Uh, <laughs> that would happen, right? I think it was the um, Islanders in the 80s, maybe. Yeah, I Islanders. Yeah, too, that could be one of those. I know the Capitals went, I think, four straight Eastern Conference finals, but they, uh, you know, had that string of luck where they could never get over the hump. So <laughs> it's been a while. It, it, it's been, yeah, it's probably been, you know, closer to 40 years than one would think. Yeah. yeah. But that's a long ways away. We haven't started the season yet, but uh, <laughs> that's going to be fun to watch and see if that can happen. But uh, like I say, long ways to go. So let's start with uh, the new additions and the forwards, which, I mean, the Tampa Bay Lightning didn't really do much on the forward side. They did add one guy or reacquired him or something like that. Vladislav Nemesnikov, who played with the Lightning uh, way back when. He's kind of bounced around a few teams, the Red Wings being one of them, and uh, was with the Dallas Stars right before last season too. So um, Jim, I'll ask you about him. Uh, what do you think he's going to bring to the lineup uh, on his second go around here? I think the the reason why they brought him back is to get some of that chemistry back with uh, Kucherov and, and, and Stamkos and some of the other players that he played with um, before. Um, they, they got him really cheap because, you know, the last couple of seasons, he hasn't done much. They haven't really asked him to do much. Dallas is a pretty defensive team. He was, you know, he wasn't asked to do a lot of offense. Um, and now that he's back in Tampa, we, what we've been hearing from the captain skates is that he is, um, really bonding with, uh, Kucherov and, you know, there may be even some speculation that especially with Sorelli being out at the, the beginning of the year, that he may get a look on the first line with, uh, Braden point, And then Stamkos could uh, go down to the second line with, uh, Paul and Hagel or, or, you know, a, a few other guys. So, um, you know, that was a, a pretty good addition, you know, to bring in somebody who, you know, a fits under the salary cap, which the lightning were against and B <laughs> has some previous chemistry and, and has a, you know, a good skill set that was probably, um, underutilized the past two seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, Nemestikov always kind of got the short end of the stick in Detroit, um, especially in the middle of their rebuild. But uh, he, like you said, he's got familiarity with the organization down there with some of the players. And uh, now he can come in and build on that chemistry. So I think that's a great fit for them. Uh, you know, you mentioned Nick Paul. He was really one of the only other, you know, uh, big moves through the offense this off season. Uh, they re-signed him after bringing him in at the trade deadline, I believe last year. Uh, what are your expectations for him in his first full season with the lightning? And will he end up living up to that extension? Oh, I think he'll live up to the, um, the extension. I think what, you know, they kind of expected him is, is what they, you know, what they did. They got a player, you know, who goes in and grinds it out every night and, he really provided some, you know, clutch moments in, in, um, yeah. you know, the playoffs, you, you go back to the, you know, to, uh, the game winning goals he had in, in against Colorado. And of course the ever, you know, famous, uh, two goals he had against Toronto. Sorry, Maple Leafs fans that <laughs> you relive that, but, um, you know, that's the kind of things he just, he just shows up at big moments, you know, he'll go along, do his job. And all of a sudden there he is. And I think that's what, you know, they expect from him. And I think that's what mm -hmm. he'll deliver. Cause that's the kind of player, you know, that, that he was, but he never got the chance like in Ottawa to, to do it on a bigger stage, like the playoffs. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I love his game. I think I put him on a, a trade target list last year for the Canucks to grab at the deadline. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously didn't happen, but uh, yeah. 
you know, he's that type of player. And I had no, I wasn't surprised that he started performing in the playoffs because that's just, you know, you saw it and that's just the types of the players you need. And that's what he did. So um, I'm expecting he's probably gonna be a big part of the team. Like we'll talk about guys that left and one of the bigger guys that left, but uh, he's probably going to have a chance to get elevated in the lineup. Like you said, second line, maybe I mm-hmm. uh, actually, and he did that, you know, with the injuries to point in the playoffs, he kind of was elevated up the lineup and mm-hmm. performed pretty well. So um, I'm expecting him to be really good this year and uh, you know, in a full season. And even though the, you know, the money's higher, he's going to be paid a lot more, but um, he's just that type of player just comes to play. Like you said, and, and uh, just performs. And that's just, yep. it doesn't matter if he's getting paid a hundred thousand dollars or, you know, 10 million, he'll play the same way. Um, so I'm sure he'd prefer uh, the 10 million though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's crazy for that, but you know, you know what I mean, right. It's a, it's, it doesn't matter what he's getting paid. He'll, he'll do the same thing. But, but, right. Uh, he, he shows up, he does his job. He works hard. Like yeah. he's one of those guys that everyone wants a, a Nick Paul type player on their, you know, third line's awesome to be there, but I think you're right. I think he's going to get more opportunities at the second line this year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about another guy that's similar type player. He played on the third line as well. Brandon Hagel came over from the Chicago Blackhawks at the trade de- or around the trade deadline. And, um, you know, they had to give up a ton to get him, but uh, now he's part of the core. So um, long-term, what do you see coming from Hagel uh, this season? What I would like to see is the player that had, what do you have, like about 37 points in 55 games, I think, with the Blackhawks last year. He really picked up his scoring. And when he came when he came to Tampa, he kind of struggled a little bit, um, you know, getting the chemistry. I think being only 23 years old and playing on such a, you know, veteran-laden team, uh-huh. uh, I think that kind of overwhelmed him a little bit. But now he's got that experience with him. He played well in streaks during the regular season in the playoffs. Now that, you know, he's going to go into training camp with him. He's familiar with all the players. I think he's, I would hope that he's going to produce similar numbers to what he did with the Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you're right. He kind of was finding that role within that team. Uh, The Blackhawks were a very young team and very, uh, you know, just free flowing Uh, letting them kind of go and figure out their own game as they went. Whereas uh, the lightning are very much systematic and, you know, approach their team or their game in a whole, you know, style as a, as a team. And he was still trying to figure out what that role would be for him, but Mm -hmm. I agree. I think he's poised for a much bigger role, a much bigger season this year. And part of that, uh, you know, for Hagel and for Nick Paul is because of Andre Palat, leaving in free agency, uh, you know, due to salary cap issues, the lightning couldn't really keep a lot around uh, and had to let him walk. So how much is Tampa going to miss his contributions, not just in that regular season being that, you know, uh, secondary score for the team in big games throughout, you know, the regular season doing it consistently, but also in the playoffs where he was putting up some big numbers in the first couple of rounds. Yeah. And I think actually the season before last, he was their, their leading scorer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the playoffs. And I think, I think they're going to miss that uh, quite a bit. Um, And I think, you know, in addition to the scoring, the reason why he got so many scoring opportunities is because he's a guy who took the pressure off of of Kucherov Kucherov and Stamkos. If you started focusing too much on them, whether they're, you know, one of them or both of them are playing on the line, he took full advantage of that, um, which would be the natural thing for a team to do. And when he had that opportunity, he made the most of it. And it was a tough thing. I mean, the salary cap, that's kind of what it's intended to do is to make sure that teams like Tampa don't, you know, you know, keep spending money and and keeping all these, you know, players to themselves. So, you know, now he's, you know, off to New Jersey and uh, Tampa's going to have to find a way. I don't think it's going to be one player. I think it's going to be a couple players that are going to have to, you know, kind of alternate and replace him. Well, that's a good segue into the next question was, uh, who do you see uh, stepping into that uh, Palat's role? I mean, Palat usually played on the first, second line, kind of bounced around there, played with Stamkos a lot. Uh, uh, who do you see yeah. kind of playing there uh, this season? Because they didn't really get anyone. Like Nemestikov, he could maybe. Um, uh, who do you see there? Well, yeah, Nemestikov could be could be one of them. Um, you know, hopefully uh, a Braden Point can um 
you know, do, you know, he, he was fantastic when they sorely missed him in the playoffs last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, uh, they did. That, that was an unfortunate um, injury. Uh, then you're ready for, you know, maybe a young guy like Ross Colton to, to step oh, yeah. up. And, uh, you know, I think he's about ready to, you know, to, to put up some more numbers and take a bigger role. And I, I think if, if anybody, any group of players, the players we mentioned before and Colton are the ones that are going to have to be doing that, like on a rotating basis or whoever's hot or whoever the matchup is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to see Colton kind of fill that role. Um, I love his game and uh, it'd be great to see him be able to jump in and, and really take off because he's got that potential. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I like Colton's game too. I think he's, he's poised for that breakout uh, season. I think that this season, so I may have taken one of your answers, but I, that's what I think <laughs> <laughs> later on, but uh, yeah, no, exactly. He's like, he's like Hagel. He's another young guy who I think kind of like yeah. stepped back a little bit and, you know, was kind of just like following the veterans. And I think mm. now he's got enough in him to say, okay, you know, this is your time now, Mr. Colton, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, know, you are now kind of the veteran of this team. Let's get up on, you know, one of those, uh, you know, top nine forward positions and, uh, you know, show, show us what we know you can do, what, we, what we've seen before, especially in the AHL and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's talk about this forward group as a whole, before we move on and talk about the other positions, the last, or there are two Stanley cup years, right. When the lightning went back to back, they were riding that success off of their depth and their third line that could score and shut down other teams. Uh, last year, they had Nick Paul that they brought over and Corey Perry, who tried to fill that role after leave, uh, losing uh, Coleman and Gord. Now heading into this season, they lost Palat, who is also a big part of that scoring line. So as a whole, how does this forward group match up with their division rivals in the Atlantic? Well, I think, I think for the division with, you know, th there's such a, um, a gap between the top four and the bottom four. I think they're fine with the top four, um, you know, whether they're third or fourth, you know, kind of, you know, I think there's some probably other teams that maybe, you know, on paper have better forward groups. I, I think they're up there and I think they're fine and they'll hold their own. And, you know, I, I still think they're significantly better than, um, you know, the, the teams that were on the bottom four last year and, and, even though most of them improved, you know, in the off season, uh, I, I still think they're, they're, you know, substantially better than, than that, you know, the, that group. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, they've still got their elite talent. Okay? <laughs> you know, you lose Palat, but I mean, you still got Stamkos, Kucherov, uh, Point, and yeah, it, it, it's, they yeah. still got some pretty good, pretty good forwards. As long Kalorn, as they, the three of them can stay healthy. Yeah. Kalorn. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they they're always going to be toward the top of whatever league or division they're in. Yeah, I mean, and you can I mean, Hagel can score twenty. I mean, yeah, well, you know, the, there's there are a lot of guys. You don't know what uh, you know Nick Paul can do. You know, playing in the elevator role all season too. So, um, and you brought up, you know, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, you brought up Kalorn. He's kind of another like sneaky guy. I, you yeah. know, I was looking at last year's stats. I'm going, really? Yep. He had that many points. Yeah. <laughs> just he's, it, he's, it doesn't yeah. seem that way, but he just kind of, you know, I, you know, I am, I'm doing my thing. I'm not flashy, Yeah. yeah. but you know, I get the job done. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a nice compliment to Stamkos and Kucherov and all the other guys. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, that's a discussion, but, if they are going to re-sign him too, because I think he's in a contract year this year um, yeah. too. So and that's going to be interesting to follow. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's shift to the defense now and talk about a couple. I mean, this is where some of the new additions came and they also lost a couple guys too. Um, brought in Ian Cole and Hayden Flurry. Um, not necessarily high end guys, but uh, they can help out. What do you think about those additions uh, to the team this year? Um, they were nice additions They're you know, they're going to be, you know, bottom, you know, you know, the, the third pairing, maybe even seven, sometimes Cooper likes to go with 11 forwards and seven, de um, defensemen, you know, they're brought in to eat minutes. They're, they're going to be down on the third line or the seventh guy. They need to come in. They, they just need to do their job. Um, you know, like I said, eat minutes, 
you know, play to what they're capable of and, and make sure that all the other uh, defensemen, um, you know, are, are healthy and, and, you know, getting uh, enough time, you know, off the ice, you know, so they can play to their maximum. Cole brings a nice pedigree of already having two Stanley cups. He had a, you know, pretty solid year with Carolina last year. Yeah. Carolina was very stout, um, mm -hmm. you know, defensively, especially at home. So he was a nice, you know, kind of a nice budget, um, you know, player to bring in flurry. That's a nice pickup because oh, he was like a top 10 pick and just yeah. really hasn't hit his stride. And, and, you know, Tampa has sometimes, you know, gotten those guys uh -huh. that are, you know, they, they're, they're mid-level draft picks, some guys that aren't doing well and they come in and in their system, they can really get them to bring out their best. So they, they were two um, very nice budget conscious um, acquisitions that they did in the off season. Yeah, absolutely. And I think both of those guys are going to fill in nicely for the two players that uh, we'll talk about in a minute that, you know, left this off season, but uh, I, yeah, Ian Cole veteran, you know, going to fit right in line with that defensive core. Hayden Fleury, like you said, young guy, never really developed into that, you know, puck moving defenseman play driver that they expected him to be. But, uh, you know, you put him with the right pairing on Tampa Bay's line and he can just give him the green light and say, you know, go figure out what you can do and, and we'll go from there. So uh, that could be a fun, fun dynamic to watch this season. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the backbone of that defense. Victor Hedman, he had a career high 85 points last season, but lost out to the Norse to Roman Yossi, who had 92 points. Wait, no, he also lost <laughs> to Kale McCarr. Well, that's a whole different segment we can talk about later. But <laughs> do you expect Hedman to maintain that level of production this season, or is he kind of toward the, uh, the area of the arc where it's starting on the downturn? I, I don't think he's starting on the, on the downturn. I, I just think 85 is, you know, is a very lofty kind of goal to, to, True. you know, attain for yeah. him, you know, in a second season, especially as we'll get into, I think the loss of, of McDonough is going to require him to pay, uh, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, attention to, you know, defense, depending on who he's paired up with. Yeah. You know, they're still going to be working on that throughout. There's, there's, um, you know, speculation that it'll be Eric Cernak. They might even put, you, you know, young Cal foot up there with him to, you know, kind of help bring him along, you know, a, a bunch of other pairings. So I think 85 is um, unrealistic. And if you said, Oh, he's going to do 75, I would take that in a minute. I even take 70. <laughs> because I think, I think that was just such a career kind of year. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe a little bit of more of an anomaly than, than what you expect, but he, you know, he was fantastic. And could he do it again? Maybe he steps up and takes more of the, you know, offensive load off, you know, some of the guys that are missing. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him, um, you know, this season. Well, it was insane. Those three defensemen, like what the heck? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, have, like any other guy year. had 85 points. He doesn't win the Norris trophy. And then another guy at 92 doesn't win the Norris. Either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other year, either of those guys are winning it. Like, unanimously yeah it's not even uh, it's not even wanting to be close yeah <laughs> <laughs> but just happened to be last year everyone wanted to just be overachievers apparently right. yeah it's gonna be interesting to see for the whole nhl of how all this kind of because that was a lot of goals a lot of scoring oh. most most year. ever in the Holy. nhl in a season i mean granted we had a whole nother team that played 82 games so that's gonna yeah. make it automatically you know most right. teams yeah. ever right. the most games ever right. but uh, yeah, most most scoring ever in the NHL season. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Well, uh, we mentioned his name, and uh, you know he had to be traded again. Mallory Cap, stuff like that. Ryan McDonough traded to the Nashville Predators, who we haven't talked about Nashville yet. They're an insane defense yeah. core there. Uh, so who is going to replace his minutes? So we talked. You talked about Hedman, but he already plays a ton. So how much more can he play? Um, who is going to have to step up to uh, replace him? Um, well, the first thing I'm going to say is I, I don't think anybody's going to replace McDonough in the locker room. I think that's where he's going to yeah. be. Um, you know, the, the biggest loss is, is, is there. He's such a team leader, you know, that veteran presence, that's going to be tough to replace. Um, you know, 
they have a lot of other veterans there. I think, you know, they'll be okay. But I, I think, you know, especially beginning of the season, they're going to miss that. As far as his minutes and his time, now it's time for, you know, the two, you know, the two guys they gave extensions to, Eric Cernak and Mikhail mm -hmm. Sergachev, to, you know, this is your time, guys. Yep. Is what you've been kind of grooming. Again, some of those young guys that may have been kind of like, you know, um, I'm with the veterans. Here you go. You're the veteran. You know, here's your opportunity. You're probably going to play, you know, in, in the, you know, top two uh, D lines. It's now, now it's time to step up and, and start playing. Yeah. And I think yeah. they will. I, I think that there, there's a lot of talent there. Um, it, it's just what they won't be able to do is, is, is replace that, you know, veteran leadership on the ice too. He was, he was, you know, a leader on the ice, especially on the, uh, he was one of the leaders on the penalty kill. So yeah, that'll be another area that, somebody will have to step up and, and, you know, take those minutes too. Yeah. Well, Sergachev, I think in particular is the guy that I think is going to have to really step up the most. Um, I know he's, he plays in the top four mostly too anyway. Right. Um, yeah. But I think he's going to be, yeah. Elevated into different responsibilities that he usually didn't have because McDonough is there. Right. And, uh -huh. and the guy we're going to talk about next too. So um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and uh, I mean the fact you know Sergachev, I believe, is their only other left-handed defenseman right now. Besides, uh, um, they don't have many Ellie, or besides Hedman. Regular, yeah, regular. Yeah, besides Hedman, because yeah. McDonough was as well. But you know, Ruda uh, or Cernak, um, uh, Ian Cole, I believe Hayden Flurry are all righties. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, you know, you're you're missing a left-hand shot and replacing them with two righties that can be interesting um, as well, dynamic. Uh, but all right, so we kind of already talked about, you know, what McDonough brings to that locker room. He was a captain uh, with New York before he came over, uh, you know, kind of talk about Ian Cole being that veteran presence that can, can kind of replace that a little bit, maybe on the ice, off the ice. But how much will the Lightning really miss not only McDonough, but Jan Ruda, because he was kind of a quiet presence on that ice and a calming presence because he was always seemed to be in the right spot. You never really noticed him. You know, one of those guys that you could rely on. So, uh, you know, on the ice, but especially off the ice, can you talk to what this team is going to miss the most about these two players? Well, again, the, the, the leadership, Ruda, it, I think it was his steady presence that allowed Hedman to do what Hedman needed to do because yeah. he's one of the guys and say, okay, maybe I want to take this risk and, you know, push myself offensively because I know Root is going to be back there covering me. Um, he's, you know, he was such a security blanket yeah. for Hedman and anybody else that, you know, he was, you know, paired up with. And, and I think that's the thing that they're going to miss most because if you look at some of the other guys, the defensive security blanket, uh, may not be there and that that will probably be the thing and I think you're going to miss that with McDonough too uh, there was a you know that's another thing you could put McDonough in there and and say um, you know okay I can step up on the blue line and try to make this play and you know help on the offensive side and I know I've got there now you're you know the players that are coming up are going to have to earn that trust yeah yeah, in the roles that they're playing, and we'll see how that develops, especially in the beginning of the season. Yeah, well, I, I think Jan Ruda is going to be the biggest loss to me. I, I, I think it's very underrated. I, very underrated. Very underrated. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking they're. I mean, they're going to miss McDonough too, but I, I think Ruda is going to be. He's like to me, he's like Chris Tanev in Vancouver here. We don't know. You don't know what you miss until he's gone. Like yeah. you, you're like, well, we can handle it, but. I, 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 yeah, they bring so much uh, to the locker room, to the ice, and like that security blanket's massive for those uh, defensemen that, you know, they're used to a guy that's always there, and then all of a sudden they're going with someone that they're not trusting as much in that, and they hesitate just that yeah. little second, uh, and then, you know, it's it's problems. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. And, but I mean, Ian Cole's a pretty good underrated type guy too. That's that steadying presence. So he may be able to step in and be that. So um, it's going to be interesting to watch um, how that all, all the adjustments kind of happen. Yeah. All right. Well, as we talked about the four grouping, you said more in that top kind of section. Um, what do you think about the defense now losing these two guys? Um, where do they kind of match up? in the Atlantic right now? Um, again, I think it's, a, it's about the same. I think, I think they're fine with, with the top four. 
um, you know, from, from the playoffs last year. Uh, of course, when you have Victor Hedman on the ice, that, you know, kind of, you know, definitely tilts the ice in your favor to, you know, just about anything, um, you know, and, and compared to, um, you know, some of the other teams as we were doing our previews and looking at, at seeing like, you know, what, you know, sorry, Detroit and, um, you know, Montreal um, might, you know, struggle a little bit back there. I, I think they're, you know, they've, they've got a good gap between those teams still, just like, you know, I just like the forwards do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're still, even though they lost two key pieces to that defense, they still have so many weapons back there um, and can attack from the back end. I mean, Sergachev likes to attack. Hedman can attack. I mean, they have so many weapons back there. And if Fleury ends up being that puck moving play driving defenseman that he's supposed to be like, uh, he, he could end up taking off, uh, yeah. you know, with that core. All right, well, let's talk about goaltending. And when you talk about Tampa Bay goaltending, you're really only talking about Andre Vasilevsky. <laughs> I mean, he's coming back after leading his team to yet another Stanley Cup final. 71 games played in the last three years of playoff games. I mean, just take, take a moment to think about that. <laughs> Almost a full season in just playoff games, all right? Which obviously means he's looked fatigued at times, not only through the regular season, but through some of the playoffs on some of those uh, back-to-back games, or especially after a long um, heavy, a shot heavy filled game. So how much of a priority is it going to be for the lightning to get Brian Elliott more reps to give Vasilevsky that rest for another playoff push? Well, how much is it a priority for me or for John Cooper? Um, I, I think we're on <laughs> different pages on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I thought he should have had more rest last year. Um, yeah. I think he needs yeah. more rest this year. I think Elliot and, you know, if they have to bring somebody up from Syracuse, you know, at, at any given time, they need 20 or more, you know, starts to give them a break last year. Their, their method to their madness was to give him time off and practice and manage that and make sure he got his work workouts and stuff. And that sounded good, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that, you know, that, that played out like they thought it would, you know, in the course of, you know, the playoffs and, and yeah. especially at the end of the regular season. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned, he's played a ton of hockey. Yeah. <laughs> The the and, and it's not been regular hockey. I mean, I no. know I know the that's COVID, intense hockey. <laughs> yeah, the COVID shortened seasons, mm-hmm. but it also scrunched it together and yeah. added a new layer of stress that people had to deal with. Yep. When I went back and looked at his numbers, and I'm going like, oh yeah, that's right. There was like two games where um uh they had to bring up the two goalies from Syracuse, Leg- Legacy and Athnold. And they, they were starting because, um, you know, Elliot and, and Vasilevsky were out on COVID protocol. Yeah, now, yeah. hopefully we're done with that. But, you know, the idea of, of him not playing as much, to me, seems to be um, something that should be a priority going forward, you know, next season. Elliot did well. I yeah. think like 11 and four, had a 9, 10, 11, 12 save percentage. Now, granted, he probably, you know, got to, you know, cherry pick some of the weaker teams. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what the backup goaltender is supposed to do. Yeah. He's supposed to come in and allow you to beat the lesser teams so your top goalie gets the night off. And, you know, hopefully, whatever that, you know, Vasilevsky stays healthy and he's he's getting the rest and everything that he needs, Um Cause I, I expect another playoff run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. It, it, Elliot's like you say, he's not like he's a bad goaltender. He can come in, he can play and, and give you a solid, solid back there. So why not put him in? I know. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I remember two years ago, I, I wrote an article about uh, them needing to let McElhenney play more yeah. to arrest him and then the next like two or three games he came in McElhenney like let in like six seven goals and it's like <laughs> uh, I probably just ruined that experiment so that's probably why they didn't go to Elliot too much last year because you know <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I know. It, 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 it'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I think they should. Um, I mean, Vasilevs is an amazing goaltender, but oh, yeah. he is human. He is not a robot, so he needs to, <laughs> he needs to get some rest, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's talk about how they match up. Um, Vasilevs, obviously, uh, one of the best goaltenders in the NHL uh, still. Um, where do they kind of match in this? Are they towards the top? Are they the top? Uh, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, I think if you if you take a look and you think that Vasilevsky and Shesterskin are the two best goalies in the NHL, then you know they're they're there at the go. top. <laughs> uh, you know, the rest of the teams, uh, you, know, you know, Toronto. We'll see what they are. Um, you know, Florida has decent goaltending. Boston, we'll see. But you know, as far as you know that goes. You know, you, you have the best, if not one of the best goalies in the NHL. So, you know, they're just fine, you know, for the Atlantic division there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of the best goalie in the NHL, you, my friend, Jim, are going to do your best Vasilevsky impression as we move into our quick fire round and we whip some questions at you. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> For this, uh, for this segment, we're going to ask you some questions. We'll go back and forth. Uh, we want to get your either one word answer or uh, one word and then a sentence or two to kind of explain your answer. But go ahead and just give us uh, what you have right off the cuff. So okay. kicking things off, who, what is the biggest storyline or question mark for the Tampa Bay Lightning heading into the 2022-23 season? Can they reach their fourth straight Stanley Cup? <laughs> yeah. 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 Good one. There you go. Um, one or two breakout stars. Uh, I would like to say Ross Colton that we talked about before. And I, this is more maybe kind of a hope than it is, is, is Cal foot. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to see him break out just for, you know, a variety of different reasons, just for the team. And, and, um, a little side note, his dad was my son's favorite player growing up. So <laughs> there you go. we know the foot family well from that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think he's poised for a big year too. Yeah. Uh, who is one player that needs a bounce back from last season? Um, it's a guy we didn't talk about on defense. It's Philippe Myers. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we would like to see, I think Tampa would like to see and why they didn't like, you know, take him and get rid of his salary is we want the Philippe Myers from the 2020 bubble when he was with Philly. Yeah. That yeah. was a really good defenseman. Oh, he was playing really um, well. It didn't pan out in Nashville. Maybe it will in Tampa. <laughs> I totally forgot about him. I, I kind of <laughs> maybe in my back of my mind, I thought they bought him out when they got him. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, here there's a guy, uh, part of the new additions too. All right, uh, one player that could be an X factor this season. Well, I think that's going to have to be Nemestikov. Um, and I think his versatility to be able to play all forward positions and go up and down in the top nine is going to be that X factor for him. Excellent. Do the Tampa Bay lightning have a rookie or prospect that could surprise and make the roster out of training camp? Yes, they do. They have a bunch of them. They're going to have a really good competition because of, of Sorelli's, um, being injured. I think on the forward part, you're going to look at Cole Kepke, um, Alex Berry, Beret and yeah, you know, 48 are going to be in the battle because they could actually probably get some minutes and nice. the same thing on defense. If something doesn't pan out, they got like Nick Perbix and Sean day, um, you know, waiting to possibly step up too. Mm. Yeah. Sean day has been an interesting storyline since he was an exceptional entry into the OHL. Yeah. <laughs> and then Barry Boulay was like, he was the one that he bounced around different places. He went to, to the Kraken and then he came back and yep. Yeah, him. and he and he was up and down last year too. He's yes. uh he's been on the cusp the last two years. Yeah, because he was like claimed on waivers and and, then, like and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All he right, had a very I, interesting last season. Became a father for the first time, so oh, oh. it was it was a tough year for him personally. I mean, there's a lot of stress involved in all of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which team are you going to be on today? <laughs> And you All couldn't right, pick uh, two further teams to yeah, travel. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you got one, one up here, one down here. Yeah, yeah. Vancouver, but you got Seattle and Tampa. <laughs> let's go. Let's fly uh, some back and forth across the country and going up north to Syracuse. So, yeah, you know, oh, that too. Rack yeah. up those miles for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll be an interesting one to watch. All right. What other players should fans be watching we have not mentioned yet? 
Oh, I think you're going to have to you know, take a look at the fourth line with, um, you know, uh, uh, with guys like Pat Maroon, um, Pierre Edward Belmore and Corey Perry. They're mm. some of the older veterans. We didn't talk about them. Those are guys that, you know, step in and they do minutes mm. and stuff like that. You're going to have to watch and see. I think one of the things about keeping some of these prospects around is they may get some some nights off. Mm-hmm. And I know hockey players hate that. They're, this is not the NBA where they take maintenance days and all that other yeah. stuff. They want to play. But I think the reality is, you know, those three guys being, you know, a, a little or a couple of them are, you know, Corey, I think he's, Perry's like almost 40 now, isn't yeah. he? With, you know, um, so, you know, I think that's the thing that you're going to have to watch for is to see how that fourth line, um, third, you know, Perry will probably be up on the third to start the season, but how they pan out and how they're doing it in these full seasons, especially coming after off a long playoff season. Yeah. yeah it's really interesting to see if Perry can do uh, what he did last year. He had 20 goals, right? Yeah. So. Yes. And, yeah. and, and be a great instigator, which I, I think, um, you know, help helps out, you know, he's a guy you love to hate and uh, yeah. you hate yeah. him <laughs> on your team. So um, absolutely. And between him and Maru, between him uh, and Maroon, they could have that quite well covered on that, on that bottom yeah. six. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see who's going to lead the team in scoring for forwards. Oh, that that's, that's going to be Stamkos. All right. Um, and, and then that, defense. It headman. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> those those pretty, are easy. Quick fire. Pretty questions. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy <laughs> different. There's some teams that are harder. I like yeah. Yeah. There's some teams that's like, you know who it's going to be before he would start. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe if something happens with Nemestikov, maybe Kucherov, but I yeah. think you know, the, the chalk is Stamkos and Hedman. Yes. Yeah, for sure. All right. One player that could either be traded or acquired before the deadline. <sighs> That's tough because, you know, depending on what you do with the, with the salary cap, I mean, I think it, they might, look for another Nick Paul kind of guy. I think anytime you can bring a character guy in like that, um, maybe another veteran that's kind of only got a season or two left and doesn't have that ring and says, this might be my last chance. Can you trade me there? And can I be a part of that? I think that's the, the kind of people, you know, that they're, you know, would probably look to bring in, um, you know, at the trade deadline to, to help bolster them for a playoff run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. This is the fun part, Jim. Give us one bold prediction or hot take for the 2022-23 season. My bold prediction is that you will see the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> oh, I mean, is that bold? Now? I mean, for it's four years in a row, that's pretty bold, but I mean, it. It almost it's seems a, like a given. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does, but it but it isn't because yeah. they're still, you know, like you said, they, they didn't get better. They didn't get really worse. But, you know, there's some other teams. Will Florida be Florida like they mm. were when they won the President's Cup? And you look on the eastern side, you know, the Rangers. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, among, you know. Ottawa got a lot men. better. Carolina. Um, Carolina's getting yeah. better. Like, it's going, Yeah. That's going to be a, I mean, the East is tough, right? We always, we've been talking right. about this there first time ever, all eight teams in one conference hit a hundred points last year. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, you know, if you're not hitting triple digit points, you're not in the playoffs. That's a tough division, <laughs> yeah. tough conference to be in no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the teams, like I say, the teams that got better that didn't make the playoffs last year. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be interesting and it's going to be fun uh, to see yeah. what, uh, what kind of happens. All right. Well, we're talking about standings, so let's talk about it. Where will the lightning finish in the standings? And you already said this, and that they will make the final <laughs> into the fourth straight year, but where will they finish? I, I think right now, if I, if I was a betting man, I would probably say they will finish the same as they did last year in the Atlantic. I think you're going to go Florida, Toronto, uh, Tampa, and Boston. Um, you know, I, I think Tampa will be solidly uh, right there. Um, I know a lot of those teams, Buffalo, Detroit, um, mm-hmm. Ottawa got better. I don't think they're there yet uh-huh. this mm-hmm. coming season. 
maybe the season after that, we might see some changing around, but I, I think, you know, there's, I think they will be solidly locked in the third position in the Atlantic at the end of the season. Yeah. yeah I, go ahead, Matt. No, I was saying the one team that I can see kind of getting bumped out is Boston. I don't. Yeah. Think. Yeah. I was going to say that too. I, I think Boston might be a little bit worse off than they were. Again, it's going to depend on how they do at the start of the season because they're going to be missing two very key pieces up yeah. until Thanksgiving. And we've said yeah. many, many times, wherever you are at American Thanksgiving is generally where you are when the playoffs begin to start. So mm-hmm. um, they could be in too big of a hole. And then Toronto is another big question mark for me just because uh, I, I don't think they got any better at their goaltending. And that was kind of a big key for them last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, if it's, Tampa it's, did anything, I think they would, they could flip flop with Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Toronto could be three and uh, you know, Tampa could be two. Yeah. But uh, maybe, you know, maybe we'll have Ottawa, to see Boston competes for that four. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto just has so much firepower. I, That's I, true. I wonder, they're going like, yeah, we'll just outscore you. you know? Yeah. They're, they're going to be, they're basically going to be the Oilers of the 80s where they're just yeah. hoping to win seven to five, you know, yeah, exactly. eight to six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll see. That's going to be, like I say, the East is just, it's a dogfight. It's going to be yeah. insane uh, this year. The Metropolitan Division and just the Metro. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Jim, for coming on. Uh, but to finish our show, we always do our articles of the day. We're not going to pick one. You're going to pick one. Either it could be your own. A lot, of, a lot of writers have done that coming on. Or you can pick one from the Tampa Bay Lightning writing team. So what do you got? Um. I think one thing for, for us is we've, we've done some um, previews of, of the other teams as we talked about and how they compare with the Lightning. But I think going on what we just talked about, there's an interesting article that that uh, Lydia, and I, I'm sorry if I mispronounce her name, um, Saika wrote about how Tampa doesn't have to win the division. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, again, you know, the president's trophy is nice, but it's a little overrated. <laughs> and it's nice to have home ice advantage, but it, you know, it's, it's kind of Tampa proved last year. It's not really a necessity. So <laughs> no, you know, no. it, that, I think that was a really interesting article that, that she did a week or two ago that, that would be, um, you know, a nice read following, following about what we just talked about. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I, well, uh, thanks, Jim, for coming on. Uh, make sure you're following uh, Jim's writing, uh, Lydia's writing, all the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, contributors. They do a great job. They're doing a great job with those previews. Uh, I've edited a few of them. Uh, so, you know, those great primers, if you want to know about the opponents that they're going to be playing next year, so take a look at those. And, of course, check out all of our all the writing at thehockeywriters.com. Lots of previews coming out. Um, well, not just the YouTube stuff, but uh, for all the teams, there's a bunch of preview uh, articles. We're kind of getting tired of doing them because we want the season to start, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> start talking about real games rather than just anticipating. Uh, but preseason just around the corner when we're recording this, that is, and uh, we'll have lots to talk about as we go. So um, thanks, Jim, for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So we'll have to have you on the podcast uh, throughout the season, talk about the lightning uh, either on our Monday video edition or just throughout the, the week. So um, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, make sure to check in all that and our morning skate newsletter, morningskate.io. You can check that out in the description. Also our uh, quick fire, uh, quick fire with the Hawk Raiders. We're going to get a few more out before the regular season starts, but check that out on the YouTube channel. Um, that's also in the description below the link. If you want to take a look at that and um, we'll see you next time on another preview show at the Hockey Raiders podcast.